Dear students of Standard 9, uh, welcome to my class. Today I'm going to discuss a lesson from English subject and the lesson is a visit to Kaziranga and Sipsagar. It is basically a travel diary and it is written by Srutimala Dwara. So be with me till the end of this lesson. I'm not going to finish the lesson in one part but you're going to join me in this lesson in different parts. Okay? So, without delay, let us begin. In the lesson, uh, A Visit to Kaziranga and Sibsagar, we come across two siblings, Lohit and Trisha. They were brother and sister. In age, uh, Lohit was younger than Trisha. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been to any interesting and important places in your life? Probably yes. And some of you may not have. That's not a problem. If you have not gone to anywhere, that's okay. If you have gone somewhere, you have a good experience about it. So the same excitement, the same experience we're going to talk on today's lesson. When your parents announce that they will be taking you to some new place, what would your excitement be? You might be having a heavy excitement hearing to what your parents just declared. So Lohit and Trisha had the same excitement. Other days when they were having school, they would not get up early. Their parents had to wake them up. But on that particular morning when they are supposed to take a journey to Kazironga and Sipsagar. What happened is that morning they were awakened earlier than usual and their parents need not have to wake them up. So that's what happened. And you know, because it was declared last night, the night was really filled with excitement and they did not sleep as usual. Okay? So their parents would be taking them to Sipsagar and on the way they will be visiting Kaziranga also. So if I ask you, being in Assam, having been born here in this place, how many of you have visited these two places, Kaziranga and Sipsagar? Many of you might have been. But then there are many who have never thought of visiting Sipsagar and Kaziranga. These are the two world famous places but then we simply ignore by just listening to the name, all right? That should not be. We must have some kind of excitement within us to visit some such kind of great historically valuable places. So, uh, as usual, their parents would take them to some new places every holiday they come across in their, in their life. And so, this time also, they were interested to take their children to some new places, all right? But then, talking about last year's holidays, Lohit was insisting his father to take them again to their uncle at Tespur. But then, it's no use visiting the same place again and again. So, uh, Lohit's father was right. And later on, they agreed on it that they would be visiting Sipsagar. And on the way, again, they will be enjoying the animals and birds, flora and fauna of Kaziranga National Park. Okay? So, that's a great deal. Uh, Lohit's question is, what's there to see in Sipsagar? He insisted to go to his uncle's house at Tespur again. Okay? But then, his father said, don't you want to see new place? You had already been to Tespur. So, what's the use of going there again? This time, let's visit Sipsagar, he said. And, you know, their father said something like this. Let me tell you about the place. Talking about Sipsagar, okay? We all know that Sipsagar was formerly known as Rongpur. And that was the capital of Ahom kings from 1699 to 1788. It's a historically associated place. And that is why visiting such kind of place, you get a huge knowledge. The knowledge which is priceless for you, okay? So, you can see many ponds, many places, beautiful temples uh, from the period around that time. And you will love it. Then their mother suggested that on the way to Sipsagar, they would be visiting Kaziranga. They would spend one night in Kaziranga and they will see the landscape around see animals and after sightseeing they would be heading towards Sipsagar. Okay? Lohit was excited at this. Lovely. Okay. Very lovely idea. 
And then he says that his excitement goes to the level of, you know, riding an elephant as soon as he heard about Kazranga. All right. So that could happen. As the day of their visit dawned, they started for their journey. Okay. As I have told you, Trisha and Lohit were awakened earlier than usual. So in the morning, they set out in their own car and by early afternoon, it means around two o'clock or like that one o'clock two o'clock like that that's early afternoon so they reached there and they checked in uh, a hotel and they stayed there in the evening while sitting in the veranda of the hotel Lohit was very excited to visit the national park immediately but then you cannot visit national parks in the evening that's restricted that's prohibited why because dangerous animals ferocious animals might attack you. That's the reason why you are not allowed to visit national parks in the evening. So they had to wait and Lohit was so excited. He can't wait any longer, right? And yet he waited, they had to wait. And as we read the story, we find early in the morning, next day, they went on an elephant safari, okay? You will find two kinds of safari there. Elephant safari and gypsy safari. It's better with elephant safari because you are riding high on the back of the elephant. So that's more comfortable and you can see the surroundings clearly. So they're much interested to see the rhinos of course because Kaziranga National Park is known for this particular rhino, a single horned rhinoceros only found in Assam. Okay, and earlier that was found only in Kaziranga. Presently, it has been uh, the environmentalists are trying to breed them in other national parks here in Assam itself, like Orang. Okay, it is an endangered animal, we know. Safeguarding this kind of animal is really part of our, you know, action in life. Uh, interestingly, in their journey, we find a lot of conversations between Lohi, Trisha, between their parents, okay? So I'm not going to touch all these small, small conversations here. You can read it and you can understand by yourself, all right? But main things I'm going to talk here that Kazironga is a land gifted with varieties of flora and fauna. So it's a home to animals like wild and water buffaloes, Indian wild boar, sambar, barking deer, hawk deer, leopard, Indian gray mongoose, white brown gibbon, and especially the single horned rhinoceros. Okay, besides that, there are number of different birds you will find in Kazaran. There are tortoises and alligators also in places. And you know, there are monkeys also, snakes also, anything that you could imagine to be in a forest. So you may not find everything. What they're supposed to be, you are going to get that. All right. So one important thing to know about Kazironga is that it is a World Heritage Site. UNESCO has declared um, Kazironga as World Heritage Site in 1985. You need to remember this particular thing, UNESCO. One important thing is, what is World Heritage Site? Why is it important? It's heritage site because we are preserving life related to our daily life, our culture. That's it. Assam is known for this particular animal. That is our culture. It is associated in our culture. And so United Nations organization is doing its best to represent this kind of culture, to preserve it for the future days to come. Okay. So UNESCO feels that to protect such kind of site is the interest of international community because this single horned rhinoceros is found only in Assam. That's why this culture of preserving the rhinos should be prioritized. That's important. Now, we have a brief history about Kaziranga. You talk about Kaziranga, but most of us do not know the history of Kaziranga National Park. Here, we have a story behind this. So let us talk about that. Do you remember Lord Karjan? Lord Karjan was the Viceroy of India, okay? 
One day his wife, Mary Carson, she came to visit Kaziranga in, in a hope to see the single horned rhinoceros. But unluckily, it was really, really unsuccessful for her to see a single rhino there. So this really touched her. When she went back, she talked to her husband, the Viceroy of India. And she talked of protecting the animals and the forest from poachers and encroachers. Later, next year, in 1905, this order had been issued that Kajironga proposed reserve forest was created. And slowly, Kajironga grew its size. The area enlarged, okay, day by day. And then, in 1916, it was named Kajironga Game Sanctuary. Why? Why is it Game Sanctuary? What's the meaning of game here? A game doesn't mean uh, playing football, cricket, kabaddi, some kind of this kind of thing. It's not, not that. It's something different. The word game is associated with, you know, the ancient kings, kingdoms, prince, noblemen of kingdoms. Why? Because the princes, noblemen were trained to fight. And hunting is one of such training along with some kind of fun. They would go in the forest, camp there for some time and hunt animals with bows and arrows. So that was considered a game. But presently this word game means animals hunted for food. So hunting is the meaning that's associated with the game meaning earlier. Now presently it means animals hunted for food. And if we call Kajironga as animals hunted for food, then what is the meaning of preserving lives in Kajironga? That's why this name doesn't sound good. And so, since hunting is strictly prohibited, this name doesn't sound good. It doesn't suit, okay? So, in 1950, the forest conservationist P.D. Stracy changed the name by calling it Kajironga Wildlife Sanctuary. All right? That's how it started. And then, again, back in 1974, it was designated as the National Park. Kajironga National Park. And the word National Park is the highest level, you know, tagged to a sanctuary like this. Okay? So, this is the story of Kajironga. And with this, today I'm going to wind up this class. We're going to talk about the same lesson in the next class. So, till then, stay safe and bye-bye. Thank you for watching.